Hi, I'm John Skinner, Regional Agronomy Manager for the Central Region here at Bex Hybrids, and today I want to take a deep dive into spraying for profit on corn. You know, our sprayer is a very unique piece of equipment, probably one of the only things that we have on the farm that goes across the same acre multiple times a year. Now, with that uniqueness comes a lot of opportunity. We have the opportunity to add things to our spray tank, to adjust our volumes, to adjust our timings, to adjust our rates, to help us be more profitable. And we'll take a look at all that and more here today with this deep dive. So last year we started spraying for profit with the profitable fungicide pass. We wanted to make sure we had four things in place when making that fungicide pass. The right product, choosing a, a fungicide that had multiple effective modes of action, the right growth stage, VT slash R1 at corn, the time of day, we needed that to be correct. We wanted to focus early in the day with dew on the leaves because that dew acted as an increased carrier rate, give that, that fungicide more penetration into the canopy, and along with that increased dew, we wanted to see the proper carrier rate of at least 15 gallons to the acre on corn. So we're going to expand on that profitable fungicide pass a little more this year by diving in to new PFR proven corn fungicides. This year we had two that made the list in addition to the few that we already had. So in the past we've had Trivapro, Delaro, Headline Amp, Zolero FX, all as PFR proven fungicides. And one thing you'll notice when you look across the modes of action on there, every single one of those PFR proven fungicides has multiple active ingredients, multiple effective active ingredients against diseases that we typically fight in corn. New for this year, Lucento, a product from FMC. It only has two modes of action, a trizol and an SDHI component. So it takes out the strabilurin component of it. And Muravis Neo, a triple mode of action from Syngenta. It's kind of the new iteration of Trivapro. Now, when we look at Moravis Neo, it's one that I've recommended quite frequently this year, especially when we're going into situations where we have a tar spot infection or we have weather conditions that are conducive to tar spot infection. It is very targeted and very good against that disease, and it's one, if you're battling that disease, I would consider to make a fungicide application with Muravis Neo. Again, all dual modes of action, all sprayed at R. Uh, excuse me, VT or R1 to get PFR proven. What's the yield data look like on our newest class? Well, Lucento comes in at 9.4 bushel per acre advantage, and Miravis Neo comes in at 11 bushel to the acre advantage. And when we turn and look at the ROI, $24 for Miravis Neo and $19 for Lucento. So very, very good ROIs on these products. And the thing I encourage you to think about, we do these in test strips on our PFR farms. Each of those ends of that strip has alleyways on it, so we get quite a bit of air movement through there. Uh, it, it's not true 100% field-like conditions. So your responses in field-like conditions, especially with heavy disease, will more than likely be higher than what we see at our PFR studies. The next fungicide thing that can, we can spray for profit with has to do with placement and timing. So a couple of these new studies I'm going to show you have different spray application windows and one application of fungicide in here actually doesn't get sprayed at all. It has a different application method to it. So first off, different spray timings. We've looked at all sorts of different spray timings for fungicides from V5 to V10, V10, VT, all the way up to R4. And we've consistently landed with our practical farm research that the R1 or VT growth stage has provided the highest ROI to us. We thought that may change a little bit when a new product came out two years ago called Veltima. They touted that you could spray this product at V10 to start your fungicide applications earlier if you had acres to cover, or if you didn't have a high clearance rig, you could make those applications because the corn would be shorter. What we found this year, again, was R1 had the highest return on investment. The other product that has a different timing aspect than what we're used to is a product called Zyway. 
This is a product I prefaced earlier by saying it doesn't get sprayed at all. It gets applied in furrow at the time of planting. Now you say, how does a fungicide that gets applied in furrow get up to the plant and provide us any control? And that honestly was kind of the thoughts I had when this product got rolled out. They touted season long foliar control of gray leaf spot and northern corn leaf blight, along with a couple other foliar diseases, as well as fusarium stalk and crown rot um, control and anthracnose stalk rot control. When we typically think about fungicides, we don't think about them as being systemic or mobile within the plant. So I had trouble understanding this concept. But when you look at Zyway, it's kind of a different animal. There's some data on the screen behind me that, has to, that is from Michigan State University. And what they did there was they measured the concentration of flutriophol, the active ingredient in Zyway, at different places in a corn plant. And then they put the blue vertical bar on the graph and said, if the concentration of flutriophol is greater than this, is farther to the right than this blue bar, that is adequate concentration to control foliar diseases. And you can see every bar on this graph has extremely high concentrations of flutriophol, more than necessary to control foliar diseases. And we see it at R3 growth stage still at a high concentration in the roots, combating off that, those crown rots and fusarium stalk rots we get. So a very novel idea. We did test it this year in practical farm research, and we had some mixed results with it. Uh, Zyway by itself in furrow, the third treatment in this trial, only gave us an ROI of $4.19 to the acre. Now, I will say when we split at, applied the flutriophol active ingredient, 8.3 ounces to the acre with Zyway in furrow and came back with five ounces of Lucinto, that provided us one of our highest ROI fungicide trials in 2021. So Zyway, new product, tested for one year, but it looks to have promising results as far as disease control goes, as well as some things with stalk and crown rots. Another Zyway study where we tested it against a myriad of different foliar fungicides. Again, showing a little loss in ROI with the product um, this year, a slight increase in yield, but the foliar, or excuse me, the foliar fungicide products were better in yield and better in ROI. Few visuals for you to compare to. Control with no fungicide, Zyway at 15.2 ounces an acre, an acre. This is our, from our Kentucky PFR location. You will see there are a few more lesions on the control versus the Zyway. And then the foliar applications of Lucinto, Muravis, Veltima, and Delaro are all considerably cleaner. So it may have gave up a little bit on the end there, um, but you do see some rust, some southern rust that's not specified on the Zyway label making those lesions. Now, if we take a look at it at our Southern Illinois research farm, there wasn't a whole lot of disease there. Those leaves are fairly clean. They, the, the Zyway did a good job for season long control as well as a foliar fungicide. So either way in that location showed a pretty decent response. Two year multi-location data on Veltima fungicide, uh, $49.70 to the acre. So that's spraying at the R1 timeframe versus spraying at the V10 timeframe. So we still wanna keep that fungicide application time in the reproductive stages. Now, another product that we looked at that's had two years of data and not yet PFR proven is Delaro Complete. It's uh, very similar to the Delaro that is PFR proven. It just has one more active ingredient for three total modes of action there. So two fungicides that we're looking at for next year to possibly become PFR proven. Now, we've talked a lot about fungicides and what they can do for our corn crop. One thing I like to expand on a little bit is fungicide additives. Those are things, since we're already making the trip across the field with the fungicide, that we can add to the tank to capture a higher ROI. A lot of those are foliar nutrition products. And in this case for 2021, most of the ones we saw heavy success with were high in boron. Now we spent a lot of the summer at field shows and different Bex events talking about the benefits of boron to plant health. 
Our 2021 practical farm research data back that up. The product, one pint of Brandt's Smart BMO with the fungicide application was giving us $16.17 to the acre. A lot of that's coming from that boron supplemental nutrition. Fungicide plus 2.5 pounds of harvest mate urea more provided us $9.21 to the acre this year. We'll touch a little bit more on that product in a minute. But I want to take a look at boron and how it works in the plant. The majority of boron is taken up later in the season, with 65% of boron being taken up in just one-fifth of the growing season. And most of that uptake is beyond the V10 growth stage. Okay, so this is a late use nutrient for those corn plants. Now a corn plant doesn't use a whole lot of boron. It's usually about 1.2 ounces of boron per acre. That's right, I said 1.2 ounces, not pounds. So it is a very low use rate. And the majority of our boron for corn comes from soil organic matter. So the breakdown and mineralization of that allows boron to be available to the plant. But since boron is a negatively charged ion, it is very mobile in the soil. So think about it like your nitrates. When they start to move, boron can do the same thing, leach out and move out of that root zone. The other thing we've seen over time is a reduction in boron soil test levels. So 1996 to 2020, this A&L Great Lakes uh, research data here showed a reduction in soil test boron levels. So we needed to supplement and add, and that's where these fungicide additives come into play. Two years of data on that Brandt Smart BMO, it wasn't just a one year flash in the pan of 16 bucks for us. 2020 gave us very similar results adding boron. Now you say, why is boron gonna help me later in the season in the reproductive stages? Well, it helps with pollen tube elongation, it helps with pollen viability. It also helps with tip fill on the ears of corn, as well as other grain fill properties. So if we have adequate boron, we tend to retain more kernels, see a cleaner, better pollination process, and ultimately have higher test weight and kernel weight at the end of the year. I did touch on another product that contained boron, and that was Harvest More Urea Mate. It's three-year PFR proven brings us $13.60 to the acre. It's a product that I like to see go out, again, with those fungicides, but it's more of a true nutritional product. It has a decent about amount of N, P, and K in it, and then some boron on top of this. And I think in 2021, we saw this one rise to the top because of the supplemental potassium that it has to it. In dry years, like some of our PFR sites saw in 2021, we did see an increase in yield and ROI when using those supplemental potassium products. Now, on this sheet is other PFR proven products like Boron Plus, which I really like. That's a low use rate product. It contains 5% boron and gives us just that one micronutrient. So if you're looking to save costs and still get a good ROI, Boron Plus would be a place that I would look. One more thing on foliar nutrition, we have a whole host of PFR proven products for foliar nutrition. The majority of these products on corn get applied at the V4 growth stage. So if you're looking to use a Nutramax or a Maxin Ultra Zinc Manganese Boron type product, they tend to be higher ROI earlier in the season. It just depends on what type of micronutrient load they have and what time of the year those micronutrients need to be in that plant. But spraying for profit should also include some sort of foliar nutrition as we found multiple ones PFR proven over the years. One more thing I wanna to touch on and that's water conditioning. And quite frankly, it might be the most important component to spraying for profit. Every time we go out and spray, we have some aspect of water in the tank. If it's with pre-herbicides and mixed with UAN for, for a weed and feed, if it's, if it's post applications of herbicides, foliar nutrition or fungicides, water is the main component of those spray mix. And the reason I wanna talk about water conditioning is because I wanna talk about water pH. A lot of times we have varying water sources on our farms. They can vary from a pond to an irrigation ditch. Maybe you have access to city water or just plain old well water, 
we need to evaluate and know what our pH and hardness of those waters is because it definitely affects the efficacy of our foliar nutrition products as well as our fungicides. And I want to bring that to light from a 2021 study we had. Pay special attention to the pH of the water plus the conditioner. When we run the control of one quart of Versamax AC, that's a foliar nutrition product, plus our water, the pH of that solution is 7.9. When we run Choice Trio or Brand Indicate 5, we drastically reduce the pH of that water down into the five range. Now that may not seem like a big deal to most, but what you do when you reduce the pH down to the five range is you preserve the half-life properties of those foliar nutrition products, and you also keep those foliar nutrition or fungicide products from breaking down or being tied up with other impurities in the water. That, those type of activities tend to happen more when you have a higher pH. On corn, that brand Indicate 5 that's bringing our pH down to 5 and the Choice Trio both provided significant ROI over the course of three years to earn the PFR Proven Badge. Brand Indicate 5 was bringing us $9.76 to the acre across three years. So the question gets posed, when should I add a water conditioner? And my opinion is, it's a pretty quick and easy answer. Anytime you are making a spray pass, I would recommend some sort of water conditioner. If it's a foliar nutrition product or a fungicide product, I'd look to brand Indicate 5 or Choice Trio, something that's really going to bring that pH down into the 5 to 5.5 range to have the best results from those foliar nutrition products. Now, if you are using a herbicide, be sure to consult the label. There are certain herbicides which require certain adjuvants as well as certain water condition, conditioners to make them work and be most effective. And I'd hate to subject your herbicide program to some, to some stress if we use the wrong water conditioner. That's it for the deep dive spraying for profit on corn. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, we have tons and tons of studies in our Practical Farm Research book, and we just scratched the surface with spraying for profit. So if you're looking to increase your ROI, increase the yield on your farm, take a look at our other foliar nutrition products, our fungicide products, our water conditioning products that are all PFR proven to give you the highest chance for the highest ROI on your farm. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed it.